Setting first year business goals can be really hard because you don't know what you can accomplish in a year. I know that I didn't hit many of my first year business goals because I either didn't have a plan to reach them or I just set them way too high. So if you're learning from that experience, there are a few goals that I recommend that you should set within your first year of starting your blog or your business. And the first one is traffic goals. Traffic is obviously hard to get in the beginning because you need to do a lot of promotion to get started. You're not ranking on Google yet and no one really knows who you are. So for me, I soft launched my blog in July of 2019, but I didn't really start promoting until August of 2019. And my goal was to get 500 page views by the end of the year. So I had a lot of work to do because I was starting in August, halfway through the year already. And for many of those months, I did not hit that goal. But in December of 2019, I had 683 page views, which was awesome. You can either set a monthly page view goal that you want to hit by the end of the year, or you can set a total goal that you want to hit by the end of the year, say 1,500 page views within a year. I would consider getting traffic to be a path of goal, meaning it's not a goal that you can reasonably predict that you're going to hit. And in order to hit that goal, you need to set an active goal to match it. Like make sure that you have one blog post up a week or making sure that you are consistently promoting on social media. That is an active goal that you can do each and every week to help you reach your passive goal of traffic. Another goal you can set is a followers goal. And there are a few things that you can measure here across all the social media platforms. You can measure Twitter followers, Instagram followers, or Pinterest followers. You can technically measure Facebook, but I would not recommend Facebook. It is just not a good enough place to grow your blog. You're not going to get enough traction there to even worry about working on the platform. So Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest are going to be the three platforms that you really want to focus on within your first year of starting your blog. And even then in your first year, I would still narrow it down to only one to two platforms that you want to focus on. You don't want to spread yourself too thin and try to grow on too many platforms at once. So the ones that I primarily focus on are Pinterest and Twitter. I don't personally see a return on an investment when it comes to Instagram. I know that you can grow a great community on there, but in terms of getting traffic and page views, you aren't really going to see a lot of good conversion coming from Instagram. So I personally wouldn't use Instagram if you are trying to get traffic and grow your blog in your first year, but it is something that you can do if you really want to grow a community on there. Unfortunately, what I did in the beginning was focus on every single platform, including Facebook and even a Facebook group, which is a terrible idea, to be honest. So my goals were to grow an engaged Facebook group, grow on Facebook, post once a day on Instagram and gain 500 Twitter followers. I've since abandoned the Facebook group and the Facebook page because like I said, those are just not really great platforms that you need to grow on, especially in your first year of business. And I definitely did not post once a day on Instagram. I don't know really why I thought this was a good goal because I hate Instagram for personal use and I really, really hate Instagram for a business use as well. So I definitely did not do that goal. And I don't remember if I hit my Twitter goal because it was so long ago, but looking at the amount of followers that I have now, I don't think I hit that goal either. You can also set a content goal. Say you want to publish two blog posts a week. This is a goal that I think a lot of bloggers set way too high in the beginning. They think, oh, since I just started my blog, I want to post five days a week for the rest of the year because you want to get content out there, which is something that I totally understand, but you really don't want to burn yourself out with putting out content, especially in the beginning, because you are going to be focusing on so many other things in your business that you might not have time to put out five blog posts a week. And in general, that is just not a consistent and long-term strategy that you really want to go for. I'm a fan of small content bursts, like doing Blogmas or Blogtober, which is you blog every day of the month in October and you blog every day of the month in December. I think it's okay to put out a bunch of content in small bursts like that, if that is something that you think that you can keep up with. But even so, that isn't something that I participate in because I don't think it is a good idea to try and push myself to put out that much content. And that is especially especially true when you are first starting your blog in your first year of business. So when starting out, I recommend setting your content goal at one to two blog posts a week maximum. I still set my content goal to one a week. I believe that's what I had in the beginning. I might have done two. I'm not entirely sure. I don't actually remember. I believe I probably did two posts a week, but since I have a lot more content out there and I have a YouTube channel now, I don't need to put out that much content. So my goal is one blog post a week, and that is all that you need. Another follower goal that you can measure is how many email subscribers that you have. I started an email list within my first year of blogging and it is something that I really recommend that you do as well. Because followers on Instagram and Twitter are nice, but those are not your followers. You do not own them. You do not own the platform. You do not run the algorithm. And if 
something were to happen to your Instagram or to your Twitter and it were to get suspended or it were to get hacked or Twitter would just one day decide to completely shut down. Now, do I think that's gonna happen? Probably not. I highly doubt that Twitter is just going to shut down, but if it does or you get hacked, you are going to lose all of your followers and all of the contact that you had towards them, which is why you wanna set up an email list because you get to collect emails from your most trusted subscribers and your most engaged followers. And then you can send them out emails weekly or monthly or bi-weekly, however you wanna do it. And you can have a regular contact with them. And another good reason that you want to have an email list is because there is no algorithm that you are fighting against. That email, once you send it, will stay in their inbox until they decide to read it or delete it. There is no algorithm that half your followers are going to see it, half your followers aren't going to see it. When you send an email, it goes out to 100% of your subscribers and it will stay there until they interact with it. I personally don't use my email list that much, but I do have it if I were to need it. The next goal is the toughest one to set in your first year of business, and that is an income goal. Making an income online is hard, especially when you are first starting out in your first year of business. So this is a goal that I really recommend that you set low or maybe not even set at all. Basically, do not have high expectations when setting this goal because there is a good chance that you will not make any money within your first year. Myself personally, I did not make any money within my first year. I had to wait a full year until August of 2020 to make my first dollar. And I believe it was roughly $3 that I made that month with my blog. So if you do wanna set an income goal, but you're worried that you're not going to reach an actual income, what I recommend that you do is set goals to help you reach income in the future. What I mean by that is setting a goal for how many affiliate focus blog posts you wanna write, or set a goal for how many affiliate marketing companies you want to join. Set a goal for the the amount of brands that you want to work with in the future and create a list of future brands you'd like to work with. Things like that, that will build up over time and will eventually make you money, but might not make you money right away. I think there are a lot of important goals that you can set within your first year of your blogging business. And income goals really isn't something that you need to focus on right away. Because you need to remember that good quality content will come first and the income will come later. And if you'd like to learn more about setting goals, check out this video right here. Make sure to like this video if you liked and subscribe to my channel down below for more videos just like this. Bye.